Hey guys, it's Ray. I am so excited to do this video blog specifically because we've done this entire standard base grading series and now this is where we get to talk about the first steps that you should start in taking standard base grading to your classroom. Now it's a little different. If you're in administration, you're looking to implement standard base grading. There's a few other steps I'd recommend, but I'm focusing this video on the teachers. If you're a teacher and you're looking to make your classroom better by implementing standard base grading, philosophies and everything that comes with it, let's talk about where to start. So the first thing I have to get out there is that you have to be realistic about what's manageable, right? Standard-based grading is a mindset as well as kind of a grade book format in terms of numerical values. So you need to decide which ones you actually have control over. If you're going the mindset route, we've talked a lot about the fact that it's all about growth. You wanna encourage your students to, to really reflect on their learning and really work towards mastery. That, that language can be used. And that's language you can use regardless of how many points something is. So the language is gonna be a huge element. In terms of the grade book, you may not have have say in the type of grade book that you have. So as you look at standard-based grading, you want to make sure that your numbers correlate to a vocabulary term that has to do with understanding. As long as you have that connection, you're good to go. Now this could be something like a certain percentage links itself to a vocabulary word. It could be, um, I've used kind of like a four-point system where four out of four is mastery understanding, 3.5 is a strong understanding, meaning that you do understand what you're saying, but it's not quite all the way there towards mastery. Um, that would make the three kind of like, you understand the basics, right? You got the basics going, but we still got gaps we got to fill in. And then that two would be needs development. And you wouldn't go below two because you want to make sure that you have an even playing field for your students to be successful, not more uh, room for them to not be successful. So if you think about it, if you ended that 50%, that's what I would recommend. That would go the same. If you're doing a normal grade book, not doing a four point system philosophy, you can still do standard based grading. So what in your grade book you could start eliminating is no more zeros because you're really pulling down that grade when really it's about their understanding. Um, you could not go below 50%. I know a lot of educators um, kind of struggle with this concept, but your focus is on student progression towards mastery, and that standard-based grading philosophy means that you're grading just the standard. So really evaluating um, how that standard can be uh, assessed with your student understanding and how that can then connect to vocabulary. All right, so what's manageable? That's the first thing. Mindset versus gradebook. Can you do both? Can you do one? Figure it out. Now, number two is where you start talking about um, kind of collecting your resources. So there's a lot of blogs that we've posted, the basics, parent communication. We've talked about, you know, how, what it looks like on a report card. We've talked about some steps that you can take. So really collecting all those resources. However, our blogs are not the only place you can go. There are fantastic books that you can be looking at from the experts that will really help you take this mind, shef, mind shift to the next level. One thing I suggest is 15 fixes. It kind of takes um, standard-based grading and it breaks it down into 15 fixes that you can then apply to your classroom. Maybe you flip through these and pick like one to implement every month and that would be a really slow process for you. So start looking at those resources, see what makes the most sense for your classroom and then just take one piece and just try it out. You know, just try it. All right, the next thing I was gonna tell you is just talk to your administration because this is something that will be contained in your classroom, but as you start using new language, you're gonna want your administration to know that you're making this awesome shift. So go down to your administration, say hello, make sure they know who you are because they hopefully do, and I want you to really tell them the why. Why are you making this shift and then how is it gonna happen? You wanna tell them this how just in case they get a parent email saying, hey, something's going on in Miss Hubert's classroom, can you give me more information? You want your administrator to be in the know because when they don't know something, it doesn't always uh, go well, not only for the administrator, but for the parents. The parents wanna know that we're all connected. So go down to your administrator, explain the why behind what you're doing, and then explain the how. How are you gonna start? Where, um, where are you gonna begin? And then how are you gonna communicate to the students? Which is then my next two things. My next two things, communicate what you're doing to your students. Communicate the why, and communicate the same thing to the parents. 
They need to know why you're making this step. We talked about combating common concerns. That's a blog that we did. And we talked about kind of ways to approach a parent because parents often come back when they're seeing school stuff and they're like, this isn't how we learned. I learned one way and I turned out just fine. That's my favorite. You know what? We need to be progressive. Everything in our world is changing. Education needs to be at the forefront of this change and we ain't there. So consider how you're gonna communicate this to parents and give them opportunities to practice. One way that we talked about in a blog was having students color in a coloring page to practice what the four scores mean. Now you'll wanna revamp this to make sure it really is authentic to what your four scores in your classroom will be, but you'll be able to do this and you should give parents the opportunity to do it. So get another coloring page, send it home, and give it as homework. Encourage your student to color with their parents and practice the grade book. So communicating with students and parents the why. They'll be very, very important. Last thing, breathe. You are not hurting students by implementing better practices in your classroom. Just like you take on anything that is gonna make your classroom better, you are not hurting kids. So be reflective, listen to stakeholders, listen to your students, collect supportive people to help you throughout this transition, regardless how big or small it is, and get the research because you are doing incredible things to make your classroom more successful for your students. It's all about the kids. So really be able to reflect and make it happen because even on the worst days, you still didn't hurt kids, breathe deeply, wake up in the morning and do right by them again. Good luck. I hope you reach out. I'm here to help.